Hello guys, Kimchester here, bringing you another Elden Ring build. And this one going to be an arcane phase build that focuses on the amazing dragon communion incantations. These incantations are some of the most fun and glamorous in the entire game. Because who won't want to become a giant dragon and bite enemies' heads off, or channel a powerful press attacks that can incinerate a group of enemies in a blink of an eye? The dragon communion incantations are very unique and versatile because they deal with different types of damage in the game like physical, magic, fire, or even Scarlet Rot builds up, making any build around them inherently versatile and can quickly adapt and overcome any challenging encounter in the entire game. Before we start, and as always, thank you so much guys for your feedback and support. Please don't hesitate to ask if you have any questions regarding this build or Elden Ring in general. I will always try to answer to the best of my limited knowledge. Without any further delay, let's jump right in. Although the Dragon Community incantations require both Face and Arcane to cast, their damage relies heavily on the sacred seal we use to cast them. The best seal we can use is the Dragon Communion seal. It boosts the Dragon Communion incantations by 15% and scales primarily with the Arcane attribute. It's worth mentioning that using two seals will stack up the best of damage bonus for the Dragon Communion incantations. The breakpoint for the seal is 45 in both face and arcane, however it did not feel rewarding going past 37 points in face. On the other hand, you will notice continuous increase in damage with further investment in the arcane attribute beyond 45. You can obtain the seal after defeating a banished knight located in the French Fox Hero's Grave right from the start of the game. I will show you the route you need to take to reach him quickly. To get the second seal, either have a friend trade you one, or start a new game plus and get the second one yourself. However, you can always use the Jellyfish Shield for a 20% damage increase after using Contagious Fury as an alternative. Before we go in details on what incantations we would use for this build, I would like to touch briefly on some of the differences between some of the Dragon Communion incantations, specifically between the normal and the named ones like Dragon Ice vs. Paralysis Mist, for example. First, to obtain any of these incantations, you have to acquire a certain number of Dragon Hearts and trade them at the Dragon Communion altar at the Cathedral of Dragon Communion in Kaelid. Although basic incantations like Dragon Ice or Dragon Fire are available right from the start of the game, the named incantations like Paralysis Mist and Aghil's Flame require that you defeat the dragon related to that incantation before you can purchase them. They also cost more Dragon Hearts to buy and consume more FB to cast. They can also be used while jumping in the air, allowing you sometimes to dodge some enemies or boss attacks. It is important to mention, while the named incantations like Aghid's Flame seem to deal roughly 15% more damage than the basic version, they seem to have less range than the basic version, and cannot be used while mounted. Unlike the basic version, like Dragonfire, where you can simply incinerate your enemies while strolling on your mount. The only named Dragon Communion incantation that you can use while mounted is Hydrox's Magma. You can only complete a fully charged cast with the seal in your right hand or with the left hand seal while having another in your right hand. If you try to jump and cast a named incantation with the left hand seal without having another in your right hand, you would simply be interrupted and fall mid-cast. This issue only exists when you try to jump while casting a named incantation. The first incantation in our build is Grail's Roar. You release an AoE roar around you that deals tremendous physical damage while pushing and knock back any normal sized enemy or boss. This should be your first incantation to cast in any major fight because it applies 20% less damage done as well as 10% increased damage taken debuff for one minute on your target. I want to point out that the Roar Medallion, despite what the description says, 
does not increase the damage of this incantation or any dragon communion incantation for that matter. You purchase this incantation for three dragon hearts at the dragon altar after defeating the elder dragon Grail next to Fort Ferris and kill it. Dragon Claw is a great incantation that you can use to deal with enemies at close range. It conjures a massive Dragon Claw that deals significant damage and provides a decent type of armor while in the air. You can cast another Dragon Claw in quick succession, but that will cause a long recovery time after you finish, leaving you vulnerable for any follow-up damage attacks. However, if you use two seals, you can simply rotate a single Dragon Claw cast on each seal, rapidly shredding your enemies while avoiding the tedious recovery time. Dragon Maw is another incantation to deal with enemies at close range. It summons a Dragon Head that bites any enemy in front of you and deals massive physical damage. Although it has a high FP cost and long cast time, it provides superior hyper armor that will rarely allow any enemy to interrupt your cast. You can purchase both the Dragon Claw and the Dragon Maw right from the start of the game for one heart each at the Cathedral of the Dragon Communion in Kaelid. As for the press attacks, you should be aware of your boss's vulnerability and use the correct press accordingly. However, I will quickly mention too that I hardly swapped out of my build. Ezex's Decay conjures a Dragon Head to spew a Scarlet Rod Press. Inflicting your enemy with a Scarlet Rod can be devastating against most bosses or outright broken against others like Rodan. You need to defeat Decay and Ezex's in Kaelid to unlock this incantation. Boralus's Mist is a powerful press attack that can cause frost build up and potentially cause frostbite debuff on your target, increasing all damage they take by 20% for 30 seconds. You can purchase this incantation for 2 hearts after defeating Brawlis, the Freezing Fog, in mountain tops of the Giants. Both Brawlis's Mist and Smarg's Glintstone Press have a unique position where they can benefit from items that increase incantation's damage like Flock's Canvas Talisman, at the same time take advantage of items and sorceries that improve magic damage like Magic Scorpion Charm and Terra Magica, making them potentially more viable for this build over other breath attacks. As for a melee weapon option, any weapon that can take advantage of the high arcane investment we have in this build can be a great option, like Mogwin's Sacred Spear, Rivers of Blood, or the Magma Worm's Skill Sword. For our stats, I'm level 150 and playing the Vagabond Starter class, but the Confessor or the Prophet are more suitable options for this build. 45 points in Vigor, 30 in Mind, 20 in Endurance, and 20 in Intelligence to use Terra Magica Sorcery. But you can remove those points and add them in either Strength or Dexterity to use any of the many weapon options I listed before. 37 in face is a good stopping point, but you can take that up to 45 if you want. 50 in arcane, although you can keep investing, you will still get a slight but steady increase in incantation scaling on your seal. For the gear, I'm using the complete crucible tree set. It provides a significant amount of damage negation and poise. The Silver Tear Mask is an excellent option for utility because it has plus 8 points in arcane. Another beautiful armor that you can use is the Drake Knight set to complete the theme of this build. Our talismans are Flox Campus Talisman to boost our incantation's damage by 8%. Ritual Sword Talisman increase all our damage by 10% while our HP is full. Magic Scorpion Charm increases magic damage down by 12%. That applies to any magic damage dealing press like Brothers Mist. Fire Scorpion Charm should replace it, especially when using fire press attacks like Agil's Flame or any of the many weapon options listed before, like Mogwin's Sacred Spear. Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman for 20% less physical damage taken. This is an essential talisman for this build because more often than not, we are trading damage because of the extended cast time of some of the incantations. Lord of Blood's Exaltation can be a powerful addition 
mainly if you use solid bead ribbon like Rivers of Blood. For the Flask of Wondrous Physic, use Cerulean Hidden Tear to remove the FB consumption on all your incantations for 15 seconds. Depend on what breath attack you are using, either the Magic Shrouding Crack Tear or the Flame Shrouding Crack Tear. Other significant buffs to bolster this build are Golden Vow, increasing all our damage done by 15%, while increasing damage negation by 10% in PvE. Flame Grant Me Strength, to boost all the physical and fire damage dealing incantations like Dragon Claw, Dragon Mao, and even Ezix's Decay. Terra Magica increases magic damage dealing incantations by 35%. Final source before we wrap up. As I mentioned at the beginning, this is a highly versatile build thanks to the different types of damage dealing incantations we can use. However, your knowledge about the various weaknesses of each boss will dictate how well this build will perform for you. Breast attacks can be easily interrupted while casting, however, using the Iron Jar Aromatic Consumable would enable you to withstand at least a single attack before interrupting your cast. But it has some annoying limitations like slow movement speed and roll. In the end, I hope you guys enjoyed this build. I'm deeply grateful for your feedback and support. Please don't hesitate to share your ideas on how I can improve this build or my content in general. Thanks for watching and have a great day.